six sixty four eighty eight. That's eight seven six eight four six sixty four eighty eight. And let this healing begin. Go online to soundpillow.com. That's www.soundpillow.com. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its staff management, or sponsors. This is the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Show, brought to you by Holistic Lifestyles Radio Incorporated. Join us every day on AM 1470 WNN, South Florida's Health and Wealth Network. For more information about the show and our sponsors, be sure to visit our website, HolisticLifestylesRadio.com. That's HolisticLifestylesRadio.com. You can also find us on our Twitter podcast, Facebook, and BlogTalkRadio.com. Now, today's program. Hey, hey, what's happening? Welcome back. Of course, we are here live on WNN 1470 AM, and the light just popped on. And, of course, we want to say hello to Joe behind the glass. Thanks, Joe. We love you. And most importantly, we are here in South Florida. Not so sunny this morning or this afternoon here at 202, but, uh, of course, it is uh, going into the Mother's Day weekend, and we want to wish everybody a happy, safe Mother's Day weekend, and most importantly, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. So uh, we have, our, of course, our guest in on Friday as uh, Trip Beckert from Beckert & Associates, and we are going to be talking about some things today. First of all, we, you know, before we get into the, the whole you know, legal hour, and start discussing the legal hour. I mean, let's look at some of the things that have been taking place in the world today. Okay. What this this whole thing with Bin Laden, the whole thing with uh, the legal aspect, and they're now challenging certain things, and they're, they're looking at leaving you know tail rudders uh, in other countries that might have uh, some of our top secrets. I mean, what do you think about all of that? Well, I think you know, first of all, the the, the fact that we killed Bin Laden is is kind of bittersweet because I, it just fuels the fire. Um, you know, I, I, I hate uh, us being um, uh, looked upon in, in the, by the rest of the world that we are just warmongers and that we are looking to flex our power. This guy had to go, but I, I think we could have done it in a little bit quieter, a little bit more gentler way. Just take the guy out and be done with it. They don't have to publicize it and and – and um, and celebrate it and make it a big uh, deal because I think it just fuels the psychos that are out there mm-hmm. to retaliate more and to and to really want to make uh, the tenth anniversary of nine eleven um, uh, another uh, another target date for them to uh, do something against the U S. That's what I fear. I mean, I I, I I agree that we should kill them. I agree that we should have you know gotten rid of them. Um, you know, in my opinion, I I, I I'm opposed to. Uh, us not being able to assassinate leaders of foreign nations. I think it's appropriate in some instances. You know, Gaddafi, mm-hmm. Castro, mm-hmm. Uh, Bin Laden, uh, Saddam Hussein. You know, these guys. They should not be allowed to uh, go through the system. No, absolutely yeah. not. And, and and of course, it just you know clogs up the system and millions and millions of dollars to give him a podium or give them a podium that they get to speak from and you know and again I, i'm in agreement but I, I i look at the whole the whole thing as i you know i was i had this pit in my stomach i was watching the other night uh, as the georgetown kids were all out and you know and and they were in a frenzy and hey, listen i understand that aspect of it to a certain degree but at the same time you know, if you've lost family members or you know people that have been there, you're right, it is bittersweet. You know, none of those folks were dancing in the streets. No. They were happy. Yes. You know, but at the same time, it it's doesn't bring, bring back. back your loved ones. It's not going to It's not going to ease the pain. It's Absolutely. not going to Absolutely. To, to, to rebuild uh, uh, the, uh, the site of the Twin Towers. It's, it's just it's not anything that really can be resolved by killing some guy. And from what I hear, he was really not that active quote anymore anyway. I mean, it's we've got to start looking for the number two, number three guys uh, that are actually actively in in the system uh, planning and plotting against the U.S. and and these other uh, uh, free worlds. I think the intel that came out of this is probably going to be huge. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that there's huge intel that came out of it. So, I mean, on that aspect of it, I think we did quite well. Um, but leaving, you know, uh, uh, a new Blackhawk behind that uh, has stealth capabilities and, of course, the stealth uh, 
information. Uh, and we blew everything up but that part of the – I mean, you know. Well, I would think I, I, it surprises me that we don't have a um, a self-destruct mechanism on something uh, that valuable. I mean, we have all of this other technology, and, and they wouldn't think to put something like that on there just in this in in, in, in this in contingency uh, because they said, "Oh, we plan for every contingency." Well, but but this one, but it's like, oh, it's, it's almost yeah, like the Gulf War yeah, spell. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's just it's sad that it looked good on paper. When, when we, you know, we, we we are on you know holistic lifestyle radio, and we're talking about you know kinder and gentler ways of doing things, whether it be you know uh, from a medical perspective, not medicating, not operating, more of a of a natural approach to things. Um, when I talk about divorce, a lot of times, I mean there is the reality that you have to do divorce in a certain way when you deal in in the legal system a certain way, but even in war, I mean. Th- I, that's why I kind of think the the, the more silent uh, assassination approach would have been better and not 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 celebrated. Yeah. Look, he's done. It's a bad guy. Why are we gonna Why are we gonna give him any more credence by making it a big deal? Hmm. He's dead. Let's move on. Airtime. Why yeah, well, airtime? yeah. Well, it sells papers and sells uh, sells advertising. So. And, and I'm I'm glad that you you posed it that way because in, in the end, I mean, it's done. It is over with, and we get to move on in in that particular with that particular person. So, one of the things that you look at uh, as far as gun laws and lobbyists and all of the things that are taking place for. Uh, the I mean, because the reality is now is if you start to look at the situations that they found out about with the trains and all of that stuff, and and do you believe in a way that we're taking the guns away from the people that really, you know, don't have an issue with carrying a gun and maybe they should carry a gun, but at the same time we're leaving it open for a person on the street to to have a gun that is more of the seedier type person that really shouldn't have a gun. I mean, by putting gun laws in place like we should to a certain degree, well, I also think that we're stunting our, stunting our, own, our own safety. Um, I'll give you a, a perfect example. Several years ago at Lums in Texas, do you remember that? One of the late, the guy came in and shot the place up. But Texas had just passed a law stating that you couldn't carry it into a restaurant. You could, you could carry it in your car. But you, when you were going into a restaurant, you were going into a church or a bar or anything like that, you couldn't carry your gun. And they had made that law and that change. And, and it was a couple of weeks after that, this guy goes in and shoots up this place. And one of the ladies that was there stated that her gun was in her car, and she hadn't lost her. She wouldn't have lost her mom and her dad. All were killed in front of her that day if she had had the right to carry her gun in there. So well, in her own public safety. Well, I, I, and I think you make a very good point. That's. That is um, a perfect example of how the law backfired. And, you know, I am a proponent of, um, of, of education and of um, uh, responsible use of um, all sorts of sporting activities, whether they may or may not be considered dangerous or not. My dad taught us how to hunt at a very early age. Um, took us out, uh, you know, quail hunting and duck hunting out here in the Everglades when we were kids. Uh, before my dad passed every year at Christmas time, he would take us up to Lake Okeechobee. We would shoot ducks in the, in the lake. Uh, and it became just kind of a, a thing, a, a time for us to get together. He took me to Africa um, between law school and, and, and grad school. And I uh, was there for a month on safari. And it was something that it was a life-changing experience for me. Um, do I think because we simply regulate um, uh, guns out of the hands of um, uh, responsible citizens, it's going to make it uh, safer for us to live as citizens? Absolutely not. I think we should do it more in tune of uh, driver's licenses, just like we do with the carry permits. You make them take a course. You make them register uh, their ability to carry a gun and, and or to identify the weapons. And if you're caught without that registration, you lose that right, and there are severe penalties for that. I know it's kind of like a, a, a civil liberties. P- people probably up in arms saying, why would you do something like that, and why do you have to disclose and this and that? Because I think it makes it more reasonable that you've taken a course, that you know how to handle a firearm responsibly, um, because there is a... Um, a responsibility to that type of, uh, of, 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 a, of a sporting event or to an activity because it's a very dangerous uh, thing. And if you don't know what you're doing, somebody can innocently get hurt. And a lot of people 
buy a handgun from Joe Schmo or get one uh, bequeathed to them because their parents passed away and they've got uh, Uncle Bob's old revolver. And that's how things happen. They've never handled a gun before. They've never gone to the range. They've never loaded it. They've never had somebody go through all of the steps necessary to protect themselves and their loved ones from an accident. And then an accident happens and everybody's in an uproar. Oh, my God, you should take away all the guns. No, uh, you should educate the people on how to use them properly or not issue them a license to have one. It's just that simple. Um, that's, at least that's the way I feel about it. And when you, and again, I'm, I'm looking at the safety end of it, okay? I have, yeah. a, I have a handgun next to my bed. Mm -hmm. I have a two-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. and that handgun is in what they call a safe lock. And it requires my, my common, uh, you have to press the buttons in a certain sequence in order for that to open safely. So there's no way in the world she could get in there. But at the same time, I have it in my home to protect my two-year-old daughter. So if somebody were to come in my home, I would be able to stop that intrusion. I also have a carry permit, so when I go to restaurants or to other locations, I'm able to carry that, that, that gun. And if somebody were to do something and put my family in harm's way, I would be able to defend us. Um, but well, that brings up the – let's look at the legality of it. Okay. Okay, so if, some, if you are in a position where you're carrying a gun mm -hmm. and you have to be under an uh, imminent, imminent uh, threat of – for you to be able to, to, to discharge that gun, is that correct? Well, yeah, I mean, you can't just, you know... Uh, I mean, if somebody came in and they were robbing somebody else, could you intervene on that situation? Or I mean, where's, well, the, where's the law stand Well, the, the, the law doesn't necessarily allow me to um, uh, discharge my weapon and kill somebody to stop a robbery. Um, uh, but more likely than not, if you, if you intervened into that robbery situation, the gun would be uh, shifted from the teller to you, and then you would have uh, um, an imminent expectation of, of death or bodily harm. And, and then you right. could protect yourself. But, you know, uh, but, but by the same token, if you're in a store and you draw your weapon and you say, drop your weapon, get down on the floor, I'm going to shoot you if you, if you turn around, um, and this person who's robbing a store happens to turn on you and you believe he's going to shoot you, and you shoot him first, realistically, you may be indicted, but what's the likelihood of a conviction in a situation like that? I mean, Absolutely. you know, the state may require what they call a jury pardon. They're not going to turn a blind eye. Technically, you did something wrong. They'll try you knowing that a jury of your peers will more likely than not um, acquit, you. Uh, acquit you. Is it correct? No. You don't want to put yourself in those situations, and that's the whole premise behind carry permits. Hmm. Don't, don't allow yourself to get caught up in those situations. Yeah, so this is in the Wild West. Yeah, you're you're not given a carry permit uh, to go off like Wyatt Earp. You're there to protect yourself and your loved ones. Period. So, and, and of course, this comes back to what you were saying, the education aspect of it. So, if you're educated properly on all of that, now when we take this a step further and we take into account that you know, hey, listen, we live in some really uh, off the chain times. I mean, look around. I mean, it's it's really crazy. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, I believe, has to do with the economy. A lot of it has to do, if you, and, and it's been this way for years. For, for you know, the last 200 years in this country, whenever there's a bad time, of course, bad things start to happen, crime raises, you know, a whole nine yards. So, so we're in a position now where we have to really be careful of our surroundings. So when you're in parking lots, when you're in certain places, you need to really know who's around and what you're doing and, and to be safe, you know. Um, carrying in pocketbooks and, and making sure that you're safe while you're, you're making your journeys. What are some of the things that if you go into a parking lot, you know, as you know, I'm sure that there's, there's certain situations as victims. Well, you know? from, from that perspective, um, you know, if you go to, uh, and we'll use something that's very current, um, the Boca Town Center, right. um, there's been several publicized um, murders and kidnappings um, that have taken place at that particular establishment. And, you know, w one of the things that's required in a situation like that is, is that the, um, uh, the, the actual facility needs to uh, provide its patrons an expectation of safety, mm -hmm. um, especially if they're on notice that something like this has happened before. Uh, not so much maybe for the very first victim, mm -hmm. but if, there is a, a, if it's known that somebody is being jacked at the ATM machine or that they're targeting certain people and they don't beef up security, they don't put extra lights out there, and they don't do anything 
to uh, protect the safety and welfare of those patrons, they, they, they incur a liability there. Um, and, that, and that becomes a, um, it's not a criminal liability, it becomes a, a, a monetary liability. Uh, the families are going to sue the Boca Town Center uh, and say, look, you should have uh, known or you did know that uh, your mall uh, uh, did not provide adequate security and my wife or my mom or my grandmother was killed um, there or kidnapped from there and uh, this has happened before and we have incident reports that it's happened before and you didn't do anything to correct it. You, 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 you go there now and it's like you, 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 yeah. every 10 feet there's a security yeah, guard. Yeah, Fort Knox over there. Which is, which is good stuff. Which is very good stuff. I mean, they've really stepped it up and mm -hmm. I'm sure it's based on a liability issue. And, and when you look at the the legality and the but as a victim, where where is a victim's rights? Well, victims' rights uh, are, are actually um, uh, run on several different levels. Mm -hmm. From a criminal level, um, if a person commits a crime against you and they're convicted um, in court or they plea bargain, typically um, the court requires them as an element of any sort of sentence or probation that they make restitution to the victims for any out-of-pocket um, expenses that they've incurred. Um, unfortunately, as we are all too well aware, um, a lot of the criminals are simply indigent and don't have anything. That's why they're represented by the public defender's office or by a private attorney appointed by the court, and the court pays them. So the court, uh, the, the victims in this particular situation will apply to the State of Florida Victims' Compensation Fund, which is available to victims of crimes that are committed uh, uh, against them, and they too can apply for out-of-pocket expenses. Again, um, that's, that's one avenue uh, through the criminal system. There's also the civil system. Um, I had a client who um, uh, unfortunately was a mother of three, and um, she went over to her estranged boyfriend's house on Christmas, um, and um, he stabbed her in the chest and killed her. And um, they, uh, the, the, the mom knew, as well as um, everybody knew, that he was kind of a loose cannon and that they, he had beat up on her before. And the mom was the one who invited her over there to try to patch things up. Well, she gets over there and her son kills her. So the homeowner's insurance paid uh, their policy limits for that particular act. Not that there aren't exclusions, not that there aren't insurance companies that would say, I wouldn't pay that claim, but this particular insurance company said, you know what, um, we don't want to take our chances. We'd rather just tender the policy limits. I think it was 100000 and they, you know, they gave it to the three kids in a trust. Um, you know, so there, there are mechanisms available uh, for that uh, when, when acts are committed like that. So, so I mean, it got, I'll give you a, one of the ones that I thought about, you know, and through this whole thing was the, uh, the chiropractor down in Miami that was in uh, Houston's parking lot. Again, that was a, a very good friend of mine, and he um, uh, and I had done personal injury cases together. He had treated a lot of my patients. Um, and whether he referred me the patient or I had referred him the patient as a result of an automobile accident. Um, he uh, was at Houston's restaurant in the parking lot. Um, he was a former University of Miami basketball star. Um, he was a great guy. Um, and uh, out of nowhere, uh, he gets shot over a parking spot. And so um, the, the, the question then becomes, um, a, did Houston's or that the owner of that particular um, parking lot, parking lot um, know or should have known that there was a problem there, that they have had this type of activity or these type of problems and done nothing ab about it? Um, I don't know what the outcome of all that was. Um, I don't know whether, in addition to that, Houston's knew or should have known that there was a problem um, with that particular type of activity because it, a lot of it hinges on notice. Okay. Um, I have a case against Palm Beach County School Board right now. I represent uh, three um, third graders uh, who were molested by their teacher. And the biggest question uh, that we, and hurdle that we have to get over is, did the school board know or should they have known that uh, this teacher was doing some type of activity like this and they did nothing about it? Well, our position is, is yes, they, they were on notice because there was a father from two classes or two years before that who made a complaint and they did nothing about it and they didn't let anybody know that they had a third grader teacher as a pedophile. Um, now, the, the problem is, is yes, I can, I can sue and win easily against 
the pedophile, the, the teacher, mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't have any deep pockets. Right. And how am I going to pay for the children's counseling and, and, and their therapy for the rest of their lives because as, as a third grader, uh, getting yeah, carrying uh, that trauma for the rest of your life. Correct. So how do I how do I compensate them? Well, I have to get some money from the uh, from the county, and of course they're you know they're not wanting to pay nickel one on this particular claim, and they're not they're not admitting liability at all. Well, it brings in I mean it brings in the whole Catholic Church thing. And well, all of that you, I mean you can go right down the line there. I mean you know the the Catholic the the, the unfortunately um, the Catholic Church has been aware of this. Um, for a long time, and they suck their head in the sands. Uh, well, and I think that's why time. they just write the checks. Well, now they don't have a choice. They are uninsurable for this particular type of act. Uh, they were sued uh, back in the 70s, um, and after that, the insurance companies wouldn't touch them. Um, and, you know, you can roll that argument into why are we allowing priests uh, to just be men? Why don't we allow women to be priests, and why don't we allow them to get married? And so we remove this. Uh, uh, thing from the whole cycle. So you could you could take this thing all the way down we, the line. We, we, could, we could run this chicken a long way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're going to go out to a break. Of course, we're here with uh, our friend Trip Becker uh, from Becker and Associates, PompanoAttorney.com. Check him out. He is a great guy. We'll be back right after this message. It's the hottest new addiction recovery mega community on the web. Rockers in Recovery. Music, news, interviews, events, and festivals with an insider's angle to the rock and roll industry. All backed up by artists who are in recovery and support recovery. Featuring dozens of rock legends like former Joan Jett and the Blackhearts lead guitarist Ricky Bird, Richie Supa of Aerosmith, and tons more. It's a worldwide music and media festival at your fingertips. Get inside the rock and roll recovery scene with a click of your mouse. Click rockersinrecovery.com. That's rockersinrecovery.com. Attention, the fourth annual 12-step music fest is coming November 3rd through the 6th in Sugarloaf Key, Florida. Four days of music and fun with 12 musical acts along with the Rockers in Recovery Supergroup featuring Ricky Bird, guitarist formerly of Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Liberty DeVito, formerly of Billy Joel, Woody Geisman of the Del Fuegos, Jason Sultan of Todd Rundgren and Utopia, Christine Ullman of the Saturday Night Live Band, and four more to be announced by September. Find out more about this sober Woodstock in Sugarloaf Key by joining RockersInRecovery.com or by calling 877-799-8773. My name is Charles Becker. If you or a loved one has been injured in an accident due to the negligence of another, care enough to hire Beckert & Associates to protect your rights. We are an AV-rated law firm and have 45 years of combined experience. We are all former prosecutors and have all worked for the insurance companies, so we know what they're up to. They have their attorneys, and so should you. When involved in an accident, remember, you may be entitled to $10,000 in medical or lost wages under your PIP policy. In addition, you may receive payments for your pain, suffering, or for the suffering of a loved one. Contact us at 954-941-8363 or visit us on the web at southfloridaattorney.com. The hiring of an attorney is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertising. Ask for free written information about the firm's qualifications and experience. Are you ready to explode your business? Then you are ready to take advantage of the massive marketing power of the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network. Advertise your business, product, or service with one of the most powerful multimedia platforms on the planet. With more than 300,000 online listeners, 30 social media outlets, and a booming 15 hours of live programming on South Florida's 50,000-watt mega giant, AM 1470 WNN, your business will be exposed to hundreds of thousands of active, progressive consumers hungry for your products and services. You'll be featured on blogs, live streams, social media, at live events, and on hundreds of archived podcasts, including Rockers and Recovery, the East Coast Music Scene, Defending Your Money, and dozens more. Plus, prime time national exposure during major festivals from Las Vegas to Boston and the Florida Keys. Get ready to take your business to the next level and jumpstart your branding strategy. Advertise your events, products, and services on the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network. Call now for special discounted packages, 877-799-8773. That's 877-799-8773. Or visit HolisticLifestylesRadio.com. 
are listening to the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Show, brought to you by Holistic Lifestyles Radio Incorporated. For more information about the show and our sponsors, be sure to visit our website, HolisticLifestylesRadio.com. That's HolisticLifestylesRadio.com. Now back to today's show. Hey, welcome back. Of course, uh, you're listening to John Hollis and Trip Beckert. Trip Beckert is from Beckert & Associates, a Pompano Beach attorney that is known all over the state of Florida. Uh, not only does, of course, uh, criminal law and family law, also does uh, uh, law when it comes to people uh, that uh, might have had an accident, right? Yeah, we do a lot of personal injury, and we also represent folks that um, aren't paid uh, their wages um, for overtime and unpaid wage claims and foreclosure. So those are really the primary areas that uh, we focus on, um, you know, the family laws, divorce, child support, all that kind of stuff. Criminal, uh, it's an obvious one. Now, there's yeah. three attorneys all together yeah. in your office. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and at this point, I mean, let's, let's take, as you just said something that's amazing, uh, the foreclosure market. Mm-hmm. Um, the foreclosure market right now, everybody, you know, is hoping that it was over, but nobody's really understanding that that next arm is coming due. Right. And it's happening right now. Right. So there's more coming into the system right now. Instead of being alleviated, there's actually more coming into it. Well, the foreclosure market is is, is, is a very cyclical thing. You, you, you're you going to have waves, of what they call waves of the foreclosures that are coming in. And uh, the, bank, uh, uh, the bank has been uh, actually put... Um, so many in suit, and then the courts kind of put a moratorium on them. They require that all new suits now are actually um, mediated before um, they're able to go through and, and to conclusion by, um, by summary judgment or by final judgment hearings. And it's one of those situations where um, the homeowners uh, or the commercial uh, uh, owners of property um, need to uh, really start worrying about it up front instead of waiting until their their court date. Um, the banks really are going to require documents that that uh, and pr- that you need to provide to them uh, that you'll never be able to provide. The banks are simply um, uh, using this mediation process and this and this this litigation process right before the foreclosure uh, summary judgment hearings to simply gather more documents against you. And I don't know whether it's actually fruitful or not. I don't know that this actual this procedure that they've set up is really going to benefit anybody. You know, in addition to being a, a, an active litigator in the Florida bar, I'm also a certified circuit court Supreme Court mediator, and I have a I have a, a separate and above degree for mediation where I'm actually appointed by the courts in Broward and Dade County uh, for uh, mediating these foreclosure uh, cases uh, when, they, when they come before the court. And it's, it's really um, uh, a situation where the banks are not in a position at all right now to uh, reduce the principal. They, if you have a $300,000 mortgage, they don't care that your house is upside down and your house is only worth $200,000. And the only way that you can really get yourself above water is to reduce the principal. And unfortunately, what they will do is they will foreclose on the property and they will sell the property for one forty-five or $200,000. And they will take that $100,000 loss. But what people don't realize is that there are federal monies out there available to the bin, uh, to the banking uh, industry that they're able to recoup uh, a percentage of that loss from the feds. So they're really being made whole, whether people realize it or not. That's why the vast majority of these foreclosures that take place, the lenders don't go after the homeowner for what they call a deficiency judgment. Now, in certain instances, they will. And uh, as the federal money tightens up, you'll probably see more and more of those uh, deficiency judgment uh, claims against the homeowners. But if you lose, if, if, the, if the house is foreclosed on uh, and, and, and there's a $100,000 gap in what they're able to recoup from a short sale or from a, um, a foreclosure sale, uh, typically, they haven't been going after that. Now, will they sign off on that uh, on, at mediation? That's another thing. They just refuse to do that. So it's really it's it, it's a one-sided game. The banks aren't going to give. They don't want to give. They say, well, come up with some money. We'll, well, maybe we'll reinstate you, but you got to provide us this. You got to provide us that. And then when you get there, it's really it's it's kind of a a, a waste of time. Well, I mean. Tell me if I'm right with this, because some of the things that we've, you know, been reading and some of the things that you hear about is the fact that the actual physical box that you were supposed to have 
from your closing are no longer there. Well, what that whole area of of, um, of controversy stems from two separate law firms that were um, investigated and uh, have either been indicted or are on the brink of indictment. And what they were doing is, is before you can uh, actually um, uh, prevail as a bank at summary judgment, which means that the, the court says, look, you don't have any defenses, the bank's going to the bank's going to take the property back um, in a nutshell, and that's just kind of like a, an easy way to say it. But before you can do that, before the banks are able to do that, they need to provide certain documents, some of which are the actual um, loan documents from the original loan uh, that took place. Um, historically, as everybody knows, uh, you get a bank statement one month from one bank, and then uh, next month you get another statement from another bank because your loan is sold and resold and resold. There was a central depository where all these loans were supposed to be kind of housed. And what was happening is, is nobody could find the paperwork. So the attorneys were preparing these, quote, affidavits of lost uh, documents. And without having done any of the research, without having tried to even find the documents, um, they were um, signing these affidavits. They were having them notarized. And a lot of times the documents that they were, they were submitting to the court um, uh, predated the documents that were filed with the courts, so the courts were looking at these documents going, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. And it was only until um, uh, defense attorneys started getting on board and really started to require the banks to produce the documents that are required instead of just kind of, okay, we'll go with it uh, type of attitude, did they start seeing the inconsistencies and the fraud that was occurring on behalf of the banks and the law firms. Now, of course, the banks are saying, hey, we didn't know that the law firms were doing this. Um, we were simply paying them the prosecutor cases, and if we didn't have the documents, you know, we wouldn't have gone forward. Well, we all know that that's a load of malarkey. So, so what happens? I mean, what happens to the person that was in this situation? Well, um, in, in, in the situation where it's found out, the court's going to deny the motion for summary judgment, possibly yeah. sanction the bank, uh, possibly sanction, or, and they have sanctioned the attorney, and they're going to deny it. And, and, and the bank is not going to be able to get the property back. Um, ever. And, well, it may not be ever, but they're, they're going to make them reinstate the loan, or they're going to make them do something pretty drastic. Um, because of the fraud that was that was committed, and a lot of times the banks don't want to go down that road. Mm -hmm. You know, they can say, "Well, what are you going to make us do, Judge?" Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to make you do. They don't want that answer. So what they do is they work out some sort of agreement and they they figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is is um, uh, the, the, these law firms that are guilty of this, um, one of which is being sued big time. It was down here in Broward that did not just one bank, but probably was handling the foreclosures for 30 or 40 different banks. And that's where it got, and they went from something like six or 700 employees to none in a matter of months. So the door being locked. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> With a red flag on it. Well, well here's, here's one, of the, one of the questions that comes out of that is the person that they, you know, didn't do the right legal maneuvering through, they did it illegal, and that person lost their house, and now they're sitting out a year, and they've lost their house, and they've lost that whole that whole asset. Now, what's that person have? Do they have any recourse to the bank? Do they have any recourse? To, of course, the lawyers are gone. Well, and again, what's you know, the, the 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 liability really lies on the fraud that was committed by the by the attorneys, and they're going to have to go after their malpractice carriers or their their insurance carriers for having committed that whether or not there is going to be an exclusion in that policy for having committed fraud that would disallow them to recover may or may I don't know what those policies say. And, you know, you, you're, you're rest assured that the attorney has probably already filed for bankruptcy and is trying to, um, you know, insulate himself from liability. Uh, but if you go down the intercoastal uh, um, and, you, and you're near the uh, 17th Street Causeway, one of the largest homes smack dab on the intercoastal is owned by that attorney. So uh, it's probably worth 20 or $30 million. I mean, it's a, it's a barn, when I tell you. Um, you know, 20,000 square feet of, of and, and, you know, hundreds of feet of seawall. So this was a very lucrative business, and, and you know he kind of had a monopoly on that for a long time. Uh, 
So, you know, but that's just one of, and there are several firms that are all kind of being accused of that. I don't know whether there's been any determination as to whether or not they were guilty or not, or whether this was underlings that were guilty and he had no knowledge of it either. That could be the case. But unfortunately, as an attorney running a firm, you're charged with the responsibility of knowing what your employees and your associates are doing, um, just like I would. If my, one of my paralegals or, or another attorney in the office uh, does something improper, um, steals money from a client or this or that, I'm the one who's responsible for it. And mm -hmm. you're charged with, you know, making sure you know what's going on. Your name's all over the building. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, listen, folks, we're going to go out to another break. And, of course, uh, when we come back, we'll have more of Trip Becker, more of the Legal Hour. I'm John Hollis. You're listening to the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network. Hang tight. We'll be back right after this message. <laughs> Bird and I love my sound pillow. Let me tell you about the sound pillow. Sound pillow helps many people in early addiction recovery who suffer from stress, anxiety, fear, and long sleepless nights to get a comfortable night's sleep by providing a calming and soothing feeling for the mind every day distractions. Sound Pillow allows the mind to shut down, the body to relax, and the spirit to heal. Go online to soundpillow.com. That's soundpillow.com. And while you're there, check out the many endorsements from people and addiction treatment centers using the Sound Pillow. Don't lose another night's sleep. Call toll free today, 877 846 6488. That's 877 846 6488. And let the healing begin. Go online to soundpillow.com. That's www.soundpillow.com. Free concert. Rockers in Recovery Memorial Day Weekend Concert, May 28th, 1.30 to 6.30 p.m. Featuring Ricky Bird, guitarist of the NYC Hit Squad and formerly of Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, along with Kason Sultan, bassist of Todd Rundgren and Utopia, Mick Jagger and Celine Dion, along with three other great bands, Johnny B and the Road Dogs, Keep Coming Back Band, and Rhetoric. Come out and join us at the First Step Sober House Memorial Day Free Concert at 450 Southwest 2nd Street, Papano Beach. To find out more, go to rockersinrecovery.com or call 877-799-8773. My name is Charles Becker. If you or a loved one has been injured in an accident due to the negligence of another, care enough to hire Beckert & Associates to protect your rights. We are an AV-rated law firm and have 45 years of combined experience. We are all former prosecutors and have all worked for the insurance companies, so we know what they're up to. They have their attorneys, and so should you. When involved in an accident, remember, you may be entitled to $10,000 in medical or lost wages under your PIP policy. In addition, you may receive payments for your pain, suffering, or for the suffering of a loved one. Contact us at 954-941-8363 or visit us on the web at southfloridaattorney.com. The hiring of an attorney is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertising. Ask for free written information about the firm's qualifications and experience. In the fast-paced world we live in, it's hard to find a company that has an impeccable reputation based on professional skill and knowledge coupled with a strong work ethic, honesty, and integrity. Welcome to the world of Canatelli Builders Incorporated. Specialists in custom residential and commercial construction for three generations, CBI finishes the job as agreed and on time. Browse our website at www.canatellibuilders.com, read the testimonials, then call us at 954-977-2775 and let us add your name to our list of satisfied customers. While at the site, be sure to follow the link for complete information about Chinese drywall and what it may mean to you. Integrity, ethics, honesty, knowledge, performance, service, experience, Canatelli Builders. 954-277-2775. Canatelli Builders, the official contractor for the Florida Panthers. 
You are listening to the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Show, brought to you by Holistic Lifestyles Radio Incorporated. For more information about the show and our sponsors, be sure to visit our website, HolisticLifestylesRadio.com. That's HolisticLifestylesRadio.com. Now back to today's show. Hey, hey, we're back. And I'm John Hollis, and we are here, of course, live on Rockers in Recovery. And, of course, the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network and the Illegal Hour and the Ship Guru, and there's all types of people hanging out on the, on the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network. And, of course, Trip Beckert has been with us from Beckert & Associates for over a year now, about a year and a half. Yeah. And um, it's been a, a great year and a half. Uh, Trip is uh, also one of the sponsors of my upcoming uh, concert May 28th that you just heard about on the ad. And, of course, if you didn't hear it, I'm going to tell you about it. May 28th at uh, 450 Southwest 2nd Street in Pompano Beach, Florida, we are going to have Ricky Bird, formerly of Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. And, uh, currently, now, where is that? Just uh, give me a little landmark. Uh, if you come off of uh, Atlantic in uh, Dixie, if you're heading east towards the beach, you would make a right heading south on Dixie, and it's the first right-hand turn followed right back. Okay. It's a real simple process. And there's, uh, if you go to the website, the HolisticLifestylesRadio.com, uh, you can actually see the map. Okay, there's great. a map there. So it's right there. It's right Absolutely. near my office, actually. Yeah, it's right down the street from me. Okay. You, you might be able to open your door and listen. <laughs> listen, okay. Yes. So we're hoping that you're going to be there. So in the meantime, you got Ricky Bird with Joan Jett and the Black Arts. You have Chasm Sultan. Uh, who is uh, with Todd Rundgren. He's also played for Celine Dion. He's also played for Mick Jagger. He's also mm-hmm. played for Meatloaf. He's also played for there's a bunch of, bunch of different artists he's played for. He's going to be there. Um, we are also uh, looking at having, uh, um, of course, uh, three other bands that are going to be playing, actually four, Throne Alive is the first band that's going to be coming on, followed by Rhetoric, followed by the Keep Coming Back band, followed by Johnny B and the Road Dogs, and then the main attraction. So we're really looking forward to having a great show. And is there costs involved? None. Free. Free. That's free. what I thought. It's a free thing. Free thing. And, and most importantly, free food. Wow. Memorial Day. So not only are you getting a free concert with great musicians, but you're also getting free food, uh, through that time period and free drinks and you know, what's the facility? What's the facility there? It's the first step sober house. First step sober house is very interesting in the in the process of how they they deal with addiction and help of addiction. Uh, the first step sober house is um, a facility that has 280 beds that deal with people that are coming reentry from either jail or prison. Uh, or are coming out of a treatment center. They've been there a long time, right? Uh, 14 years, 15 years. Richard E., uh, who entered him, was the gentleman that actually uh, founded the property. And he was he passed away uh, three years ago. He was shot and killed. Uh, and uh, come to find out it was a past client that shot and killed him. And um, But in the meantime, Richard never gave up on anybody, and thousands of people were helped by him. And uh, the legacy is being carried on by Chris Daltrey. And uh, Chris is uh, uh, a great guy, and uh, Chris, uh, Christine now uh, with the First Steps Over House. Every year um, on Memorial Day, because Richard was a Vietnam vet and a ranger, literally would have uh, this big party and uh, on uh, Memorial Day weekend. So what we did this year is we incorporated the Rockers in Recovery concert with the Memorial Day bash that they always have, and there's going to be dunk tanks, and there's going to be everything you can imagine at this thing. You know? How many people do you expect to show up? We're figuring anywhere from two to 3,000. Wow, that's so, fantastic. Yeah, they usually have 1,000. I mean, they usually have between 1,000 and 2,000. You incorporate the concert into it. It could be two to 3,000 people. So, And, you know, it's a neighborhood thing. It's and what are the hours? Thing. Starts at 1:30 and goes until uh, seven for the concert, um, but I'm sure it's going to be ongoing. Well, that's fantastic. Know. That's going to be a great thing for Pompano. I'm, I'm glad it's well, there. It's a community thing, you yeah. know. And I, and I got to say this: that you know, when when we did our first one in February, mm-hmm. uh, February 12th for the Valentine's Day Love of Recovery, You're we made it the beach then, right? Yeah, we made it a free. We made it a free thing, and and the reason that we made it free is because of two different things. First of all, we wanted the community to be able to be part of what was happening, and people that are in recovery. Now. Listen, there are guys that are in recovery and ladies that are in recovery that are doing quite well. I mean, you know, any from anywhere from park place to park bench, addiction does not discriminate. So you have people that come in uh, that can afford to pay. You know, if they wanted to pay $200 to go see a concert, they could do it. 
But at the same token, there's some people that come in that couldn't afford, you know, 10 cents. Well, they had to get on their feet. Correct. So the bottom line is what we wanted to do is we wanted to position this as a community event. And we have one more scheduled for September. And then we have the grand finale, which is uh, there is a cost involved, which is the 12-step music fest, which will be happening down in Sugarloaf Cave. We've been doing it for the last three years, broadcasting live, and uh, this is our fourth annual. And uh, Dawn Wilder from... Uh, no matter what productions and Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network and Rockers and Recovery Productions are all coming together and uh, wow. putting putting that on this year, the super group that we're leading up to is going to be amazing. We got uh, Ricky Bird, of course. We have Chasm Sultan that's going to be a part of that. We have um, uh, Liberty DeVito, the drummer for Billy Joel. We also have uh, Jeff Kazee from Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes. Uh, we have Chris Stanton from Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, Christine Ullman uh, from the Saturday Night Live band, and uh, Woody Geesman from the Del Fuegos. Uh, and that's where we're at so far, and there's more to be announced. So we're looking at one hell of a Saturday night down there. It's going to be unbelievable. And, and, the, and the amazing part is everybody's in recovery. That's great. Uh, you know, so they all carry a message of hope from a platform um, of being, you know, in recovery. That's amazing. And, and, and uh, on another note, I seen my friend uh, Richie Supa on uh, Channel Four News today, and I seen him on Channel Seven News last night. We just want to give a big hey hello to Richie Supa because Richie is dedicated to carrying a message to a lot of people in recovery. And Last House on the Block is a great song. And if you get a chance, go to uh, iTunes and download Last House on the Block. In the meantime. We were talking about some really good stuff here today, and we've talked about the legal issues of, of you know, people that have been harmed, victims of, of violent crimes, and we've talked about foreclosures. We, we've touched on a lot of different things today. <clears throat> One of the things that, you know, on the way out here, you know, uh, I had a buddy of mine recently that um, was rear-ended. Okay. And <clears throat> was he, I mean, when, when you're rear-ended like that, you know, the first thing that, it wasn't that bad. You didn't feel it that bad. And well, then three days later, yeah. well, what, what, the problem with with, with fender benders or rear enders, you know, um, you have to understand that uh, first thing you need to do is is get yourself evaluated by a, by a professional. You, you you wouldn't realize the number of cases that I have that have a uh, a, a small impact. And uh, two or three days later, the person wakes up and they feel like that they were just put in the uh, tumble dryer, the dryer, because it, it just it's a your adrenaline blocks the pain uh, from the initial impact. And as you uh, put time between yourself and the and the incident, the adrenaline subsides and that pain starts to develop. Um, and as we're older, we don't quite uh, bounce back like we used to. And um, what we what we typically call these things, if there's no break in the bone, is we call it a soft tissue injury. That doesn't mean it's any less damaging to your body because you could have herniated discs, you could have complete misadjustments of your entire spinal cord, um, and it's very very traumatic to your day-to-day -day routine. You can't sleep, you can't walk, you can't exercise, you can't do the normal things that you need to do. So, you know, first of all, you need to um, uh, document the, the damage to the vehicle while you're at the scene of the accident. You know, people think, oh, why, you know, I don't want to pull out my, just take out your iPhone or your phone and snap a couple of pictures. Believe me, the 30 seconds that it takes you to do that will, will, will more than pay for itself 100 times over. The next thing you do is you need to go to see your doctor or go see a chiropractor, go to the emergency room, go to your physician. The reason why you need to do that is twofold. Uh, number one, your insurance pays for it. You're paying PIP insurance. It's no fault. It doesn't really matter um, whose fault the accident is. You're still eligible to be seen by one of the doctors and have that medical uh, provider's services paid for from your insurance. Your rates can't go up. They can't penalize you for going to treat okay. or for lodging a claim. People think, oh, my God, I don't want to lay a claim. It'll be, you know, it'll come back at me. It can't, by law, do that, unless you're at fault, unless you were the one at fault. But at the same time, you need to get that evaluation done. Um, and a lot of times it's just that simple. Get yourself evaluated by a professional, and then you'll know where you stand. Um, and if that doesn't, if, 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 the, if the actual pain and whatnot doesn't subside, sometimes the doctor will send you out for a diagnostic test, an MRI, a, a CAT scan, something of that nature, and they will be able to look closer at 
the area you're complaining of to make a determination as to how how much trauma you've in, you've had as a result of the insurance you know as, as a result of that the insurance companies are always going to try to say it was a low impact it was pre-existing it was this it was that and my 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 response to all that is is first of all um, uh, um, you know, you need to document. You need to, you need to make sure that you have uh, the the comeback to all that. Um, and and the only way to do that is to go get seen by a doctor. And as far as the insurance companies, they have their lawyers. You need to get one. I mean, it's just that simple. You need somebody to advocate for you. You don't know the system. You know, it's taken me 17 years to figure it out, and I still don't have it. You know, you need to know where the where the inroads are and where they're not. The litigation end of this, and, and it's changed. I mean, it, it's drastically changed, and they're still trying to change it even more. I mean, they're trying to make it where there's going to be no really uh, legality or legal end for anybody to stand on when it comes to litigation and, and going to trial on anything. I mean, they've well, done it with malpractice or actually well, they, working their way this way. It. You know, the insurance companies, they have much stronger lobbyists than the trial lawyers association and the, um, uh, the the hospitals and the doctors and unfortunately the insurance companies divide and conquer what they will do is they will say okay um, we want this put in the bill uh, uh, when they're passing legislation and they know that the trial lawyers won't like it and the individual doctors won't like it but if they put a little something in there to keep the hospitals happy the hospitals will side with them so now they've got the hospitals and the insurance companies Cited against the little guys, and it, it becomes very difficult for for the uh, for the trial lawyers or the doctors to lobby like the insurance companies. Do. They've got the money. I mean, they don't get rich by paying claims. They they get rich by denying claims. United Auto is one that's that's a perfect example of that. They do not pay claims. They just deny everything across the board, with a few exceptions. I've had to have the sheriff go to their office. And, 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 and execute on a, on a judgment that I was given. I mean, it's just insane, the, the tactics that some of these really? insurance, yeah, literally, with the sheriff, with the moving trucks, ready to start taking computers out of their office to execute on a judgment that I had against them uh, before they would go get a cashier's check and write me a check. Wow. I mean, you know, so. That's like going to any like brother. Exactly. I mean, but you've got to <laughs> well, do boy. it, you know. I mean, you know, I'm like, I want his desk and I want his computer. Um, and, and believe it or not, the president came running out and said, I'll be at the bank in two minutes. I'll have you a check. But, you know, I shouldn't have to do that. And your oak desk is looking pretty good. Yeah, there, you know. But, I mean, you shouldn't, I mean, you know, but the normal guy who's paying his premium shouldn't have to go through that. Right. You, they, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to get through this maze to get to the cheese. They, it's impossible. It's, it's, and it's set up very unuser friendly. It's, it's, it's sad. Well, hey, listen, talk about user friendly. We're going to talk about some user friendly stuff. I want to talk to you about SouthFloridaAttorney.com. Go there, real user friendly. It's going to tell you everything. Trip Becker is going to talk to you about uh, his bio and where he came from and how he came there and how he became a lawyer and what he's been doing for the last 15 plus years. And also, uh, of course, it's going to talk about his practice and his partners and everything that they do together and uh, what they do separately. And also, there's going to be some other information there on different litigation and different situations. May it be from a car we'll just accident? Call. We will we'll give you a free consultation. What's the, what's the phone number? Yeah, 954-941-8363. Come by anytime. See that? And in, in, in this day and age, you can make a phone call. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how that works? Well, you know, uh, people don't realize that um, a lot of times uh, they think, oh, I, I go to a lawyer, it's going to cost me all this money just to talk to them. When somebody comes to me and they come in my office and they take the time to come see me, I make time for them and I give them a true evaluation of their case and it doesn't cost them anything. If I take on the case, that's when the meter starts ticking. But until then, come see me. I will, and if I don't have the answer, I will find you a lawyer that does or I'll tell you your case isn't worth pursuing. And that's my honest opinion. You're welcome to go down the street and get another opinion. But I've been doing this long enough. I try to give you a fair estimation of what your expectations can be. And it doesn't cost you anything to do that. You know, whether it's criminal, whether it's from a divorce perspective, your accident cases, whether your employers ripped you off, um, immigration, you know, we, 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 can, we can help you out. Full service law. And, of course, uh, Charles Brecker is uh, on every Friday. So if you want to check him out, uh, you can listen to him right here on, of course, the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network. Charles Becker, attorney at law, and he is here as the legal hour on Friday. So, of course, uh, 
Trip, we thank you for coming in. Thanks thank for you. having me again. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, man. And most importantly, if you're listening today and you're uh, in South Florida, check out rockersandrecovery.com and join the new social media site that we have. It's a social website, uh, social networking site. You can join and hang out. And, uh, of course, uh, Charles' information is there. It's also at Holistic Lifestyles Radio Network, uh, and that's holisticlifestylesradio.com where you can find that. And join us on Facebook. And uh, you also got a Facebook account, too, right? We do. Hey, Charles Beckert. Just look up Charles Beckert, and it has all of the uh, information you need there and the links that are available. And um, LinkedIn and all of that, too. Absolutely. So anything that you need, just come come visit us. But, again, you know, a lot of times you have a specific question and you need to know, what, what do I do? Just call. Um, and we, we're able to help you out, 954-941-8363, um, uh, and just ask, and, you know, we'll, we'll give you the best answer we can. With that, of course, we're out. I'm John Hollis. We'll be back tonight at 10 o'clock with more of the same. Rockers and Recovery at 10 o'clock. We'll be back. Thank you for listening to the Holistic Lifestyles Radio Show. This program is sponsored by Holistic Lifestyles Radio Incorporated. Join us every day right here on AM 1470 WNN. You can also find us on our Twitter podcast, Facebook, and blogtalkradio.com. For more information about the show and our sponsors, be sure to visit our website, holisticlifestylesradio.com. That's holisticlifestylesradio.com. All broadcast rights to this program are the property of Holistic Lifestyles Radio Incorporated. We broadcast of any portion of this program without express written consent is prohibited. The opinions expressed on this sponsored program are strictly those of the and callers and are not necessarily those of the station, staff management, or sponsors. The preceding program is a Rockers in Recovery radio production. Rights to this program are the sole rights of Rockers in Recovery Radio Incorporated. Rebroadcast of this program in any form without express written consent is prohibited. My name is Robert Gluck. I am a practicing trial lawyer and have been specializing in helping people who have been injured in all types of accidents for the past 20 years. I handle cases throughout the state of Florida. Recently, the legislature in Tallahassee has changed certain laws and insurance companies are now taking advantage of those changes, resulting in much lower offers on personal injury cases across the board. It is now necessary to file a lawsuit to get a fair settlement on these cases. Before you settle your case for less than what it's worth, let me review it over the phone or in person with you for free. If there is no recovery, there is no fee. Call now for your free consultation at 954-583-8999. That's 954-583-8999. The hiring of an attorney is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertising. Ask for free written information about qualifications and experience. Let me tell you about the Sound Pillow. Sound Pillow helps many people in early addiction recovery who suffer from stress, anxiety, fear, and long sleepless nights to get a comfortable night's sleep by providing a calming and soothing feeling for the mind's everyday distractions. Sound Pillow allows the mind to shut down, the body to relax, and the spirit to heal. Go online to soundpillow.com. That's soundpillow.com. While you're there, check out the many endorsements from people and addiction treatment centers using the Sound Pillow. Don't lose another night's sleep. Call toll free today, 877 846 6488. That's 877 846 6488. And let the healing begin. Go online to soundpillow.com. That's www.soundpillow.com. We're helping your health and wealth. South Florida's Health and Wealth Radio Network, AM 1470, WWNN, Papano Beach. AM 1470. With even more information you can use, like the Jill Dane Show, Sundays at 3 p.m., only on WNN.
Regular listeners to Peter Bruno's long-running daily radio show, Managing Your Money, know about its original form of research analysis called cycle analysis. This unique system, designed to watch and analyze stock market movement behavior in advance, has guided listeners and clients safely from the market housing area two years ago, all the way down to the previous lows below the Dow 6500, just as he protected his clients from the crash of 1987 and again in 2008. If you're not getting the same quality advice from your financial advisor, it's time you called Peter Bruno. Toll free anytime. Consider opening your personalized managed account or find out about the next free 90-minute seminar. The number is 1-800-592-5578. 592-5578. Call Peter Bruno anytime, 24-7. 1-800-592-5578. Benefit from the research that is forecast in advance to crashes. Peter Bruno, call today. 1-800-592-5578. AM 1470. WNN is now the Health and Wealth Network, featuring more of the information you're looking for. Join us for the best health programs every day. Then, in late afternoons and evenings, tune in for more information for your financial success. Only on AM 1470 WNN, South Florida's all-new Health and Wealth Network. MCFI, Medical Calcium from Ireland, is a granulated natural calcium source produced from mineralized seaweed. This seaweed is harvested from the seabed off the west coast of Ireland from the clear, pollution-free, mineral-rich waters of the Atlantic Ocean. The major components of MCFI are calcium, magnesium, boron, and selenium. The harvested seaweed is extensively washed, dried, and finely ground in order to produce the MCFI. MCFI has all of the physical and chemical properties which make it one of the purest and most bioavailable calcium supplements in the world today. MCFI is supplied in capsules of 250 milligram medical grade calcium which contain 100 IU of vitamin D3. This combination of calcium, magnesium, boron, selenium, and vitamin D3 allows for a maximum absorption of calcium. It's clinically proven, and it's Europe's most proven calcium. MCFI is available at various vitamins and herbs. Call 561-368-2070. That's 561-368-2070. Any products mentioned on this show have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease. Any health-related information given on the show must be discussed with your physician. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of its host, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of this station, its staff management, or sponsors. Welcome to Barry's Supplement Hour, brought to you by Barry's Vitamins and Herbs, located at 3551 North Federal Highway in Boca Raton. For nearly a decade, Barry's Vitamins has been one of the nation's premier formulators and manufacturers of today's most innovative nutraceuticals. If you have questions about today's show, please call 561-368-2070. The toll-free order line is 888-888-8022. And now, today's edition of Barry's Supplement Hour. Well, hi, folks. Dr. Barry Nevins here, representing Barry's Vitamins and Herbs, as usual. Welcome to our show. I must say good morning, good afternoon, or a good evening, and a good night, because we do three shows a day. We do the 11 o'clock show on 1470, 5 o'clock drive time on 1470, and 11 o'clock on station 740. We try to do those live, except that I've been so busy and everybody's on vacation since the season is over here in South Florida that I've been doing replays, and we hope to change that eventually so you'll get at least two live shows a day. But in any case, many, many people like the 5 o'clock show and are enjoying it, and we're speaking to more and more people about that. So we do welcome you to our show, and we welcome you to our retail facility, Barry's Vitamins and Herbs in Boca Raton, Florida. It is extremely nice to be here with you. I am a doctor of naturopathic medicine. I am a graduate of the USAT College of Medicine. And we are studying every day to bring you the latest, the very latest in information that can make this difference in your life. And what is the difference? The difference is that you can heal your body, you can see a difference in your body, 
by using natural remedies to bring your body back to homeostasis. Homeostasis being the condition of normality, the way your body is meant to work. And we believe that by doing these shows, you can learn more and more so that you can make adequate decisions about your health, discussing it with your physician. Now, your physician, in most cases, really do not know much about supplements. And many studies come out and tell you that supplements don't work, they don't do things. We know they do. And how do we know? Because we have so many, so many people who come here to the store and we have made such a difference in their life and they thank us. Now, I'm going to give you a quick example about studies that I'm promulgated to you to prove that supplements don't work. So if you look at this study and you hear it on television tomorrow or the next day because it just came out this morning, you will say, well, supplements don't work. By the way, this study was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, a good journal, of course controlled by the medical community. So what you have to look at is the headlines and then the study. And the headline of the study, supplements don't prevent prostate cancer. Well, that's scary, isn't it? No supplement can stop prostate cancer or prevent it. So you start to read the study, and one of the lines states, a new study deflates hopes that certain nutritional supplements could stave off prostate cancer, the most common cancer in men. And Canadian researchers found that vitamin E, Selenium and soy, taken for three years, provided no benefit to men who are at a higher risk of developing disease. Well, let's look at this in a twofold way. Number one, provided no benefit to men who, had, who were at a higher risk of developing disease. Well, let's say you're not at higher risk. You're a normal, average man. But you can get prostate cancer, but they didn't study you. No, they studied people who are bound to get cancer. So number one, it's a skewed study. You can see that right there and then. But let's look at the, the, the part of the study that I take a real affront to. And that is that they studied vitamin E, they studied selenium, and they studied soy. This is what they gave men. Now, folks, the larger medical opinion is that testosterone causes prostate problems. Well, I don't believe that. And I have certainly enough research to prove that that is a false hypothesis. We know, we know that taking certain supplements can certainly affect your risk of prostate cancer. The supplements they used in combination, vitamin E, selenium, and they added soy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're not dumb. And if you listen to this radio show, or other radio shows similar to this, you will know that soy is estrogenic, estrogen-like. And that's why we don't give women soy, so we don't add another reason for them to perhaps contract breast cancer. And the information I'm giving you comes out to doc, Dr. Fallon, Ph.D., and also out of the Soy Symposium, we have all the research to show you. Soy, in my opinion, is cancer-causing. Soy, in my opinion, is dangerous for the human body. 
We know from research and recent research that if you give babies soy milk, along with putting it in a bottle that has has bisphenol A, which is a chemical that leaches estrogen, that boys will have transgender problems later on in life, that girls develop a sexual proclivity earlier in life. You know, I'm 70, so I can remember probably 65, 64 years of my life. And when I was 10 or 12, girls did not have breasts at the age of 8, 9, and 10. Girls were not ready for sex at the age of 8, 9, and 10. And now today, it's rampant. It's rampant because girls got too much estrogen when they were younger, and boys have these transgender problems according to the studies I've read, because of soy. So you take soy as a man, and certainly I believe estrogen is one of the causes of prostate cancer, and you wonder why vitamin E, selenium, and soy doesn't prevent prostate cancer. I want you to understand and speak to your physician about this, men. If a doctor tells you that it is testosterone causing prostate cancer, ask him if it's testosterone or it's conversional products. In other words, estrogen and dehydrotestosterone. I call dehydrotestosterone the evil androgen. The evil, evil androgen. The hormone that causes men problems the hormone that causes men to lose hair and women to lose hair because they convert testosterone also. It's the hormone that causes cells to grow faster. What does that sound like to you? Cancer? Cells growing faster? In the prostate to cause it to become enlarged. So if we eliminate the causes that we believe are the reason for prostate cancer, dehydrotestosterone. By the way, men, you should have that test. You can go to your physician and ask him to test your DHT. He'll probably scratch his head and say, what is that or why do I have to do that? Tell him, you know that's what causes prostate problems and you want to get that checked because you can stop the conversion of testosterone into DHT and into estrogen. Well, how do you do that? Well, number one, you can take supplements which help prevent enlarged prostates and therefore prostate cancer, but not vitamin E, selenium, and soy. And if you don't have a higher risk for prostate cancer, the possibility is that selenium and soy could make a difference. And that's my cue, folks, for a break. We'll be back, and I will tell you more about what we do here at Barry's Vitamins to help you overcome the possibility of cancer or help you get through cancer of the prostate. Dr. Barry Nevins here. We'll be right back. Feeling your age or just want to feel young again? The original GH3 is here. That's right, the original GH3 is here. It's not a phony pill, that's a precursor, but it's the real GH3. The Anna Aslan formula from Romania calls for 2% procaine hydrochloride, and that's the original anti-aging formula. Barry's GH3 formula is manufactured in the USA, and it is the real GH3. So if you don't want to travel to Romania to get GH3, and you want to feel young again, Call Barry's Vitamins and Herbs at 1-888-888-8022 and let us remind you that the original GH3 favorably affects all cells and systems of the body. It has positive effects on the heart, skin, nails, tissues, memory function, mood, energy, eyesight, and is also a very powerful weapon against stress and much, much more. So to feel great, get GH3 from Barry's Vitamins and Herbs at 1-888-888. 
1-888-888-8022. Again, that's 1-888-888-8022. It's only $75 for a three-month supply. The benefits of green tea have been documented in thousands of medical and scientific journals. There's a plethora of studies which show the potential benefits of green tea in relation to many types of cancer, weight control, nerve damage, Alzheimer's, osteoporosis, and many other major health problems. In order to reap the full benefits of green tea, one would have to drink at least 10 cups of authentic green tea to get the full Don't forget that your skin is your largest organ, and the sun can be your skin's worst enemy. Dermatologist-recommended Neutrogena products offer the ultimate protection for your skin. From makeup remover wipes to Hydro Boost Water Gel Facial Moisturizer, BJ's has your entire lineup of Neutrogena skincare products. And now through December 3rd, save $4 on any Neutrogena product at BJ's. Love your skin back and save now through December 3rd, only at BJ's. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.